The story I want to share with you today is not a, a Bible character, but a character for whom the Bible was an inspiration that has affected and continues to affect the church to this day. Her name was uh, Frances uh, Crosby, Fanny, actually, many of you know. She was a, a, a prolific writer of poetry and sacred music, having produced uh, over, listen, 9,000, that's 9,000 gospel hymns in her lifetime. And she only began writing them after the age of 40. And so this morning I want to tell you about her amazing uh, story. Frances, or Fanny as everyone called her, Crosby, born in 1820 to a devout Christian, they were Puritans, Christian family. At the age of six weeks, she caught a cold, and as a result, she suffered from a slight inflammation around her eyes. The regular doctor was away, so a man posing as a physician came to treat her, and he applied hot mustard poultices to her eyes, and as a result, she became blind for life. The phony doctor disappeared and was never heard from again. Although she lost her sight, she um, was never bitter towards the man who caused her handicap. Later in life, she even wrote that her blindness was a great advantage to, uh, to her personally, because without it, she may not have been able to write all of the great songs that she did. Fanny's uh, great mentor uh, was her, uh, her grandmother who came to live with them after her father died, another tragedy in her young life. Her grandmother would take her out into the fields and describe in meticulous detail the beauty of the world around her. Her grandmother also introduced her to great literature and spent long hours reading to her from the Bible. From an early age, Fanny demonstrated a talent for memory work. She had a terrific memory. It is said that before she was 10, she could repeat from memory all four Gospels, the Pentateuch, the Book of Ruth, many Psalms, Proverbs, the Song of Solomon. Before she was 10. I can't remember the sermon from three weeks ago, but uh, she, she had a great memory. As a young girl, she attended the Institute for the Blind in New York City and later became one of the instructors having a lifelong relationship with this fine institution. During her long career as a teacher and a poetess, she came into contact with powerful and famous people being a celebrity herself. Among uh, her friends and supporters of the time were US Presidents Van Buren, Harrison, Tyler, Polk, and Grover Cleveland. Her reputation as the blind poetess grew as she published her material for distribution. Her first book of poetry was entitled The Blind Girl and Other Poems. At age 37, she married Alexander Van Alstein, a fellow teacher, and they had one child who also died in infancy. Mary credits this experience, the child dying, this experience as the influence behind the song Safe in the Arms of Jesus, which she wrote later in life. Between 1840 and 1860, Fanny's reputation as a poetess spread as she published several more books of poetry. It was not until 1864, however, that at the age of 44, she wrote her first gospel hymn at the suggestion of musical composer William B. Bradbury. To his music, she wrote the lyrics, we are going, we are going to a home beyond the skies where the fields are robed in beauty and the sunlight never dies. This was a turning point in her life from that point on, she wrote only gospel hymns. She believed that God had led her like, uh, like a little child uh, into uh, the work of her, of her lifetime. Fanny uh, entered into an arrangement with uh, Biglow and Main Publishing Company to provide three hymns per week for $2 a hymn. That was big money in those days. 
She often composed six or seven hymns per week and had over 200 different pen names in order to avoid the appearance that Biglow and Maine published only her hymns. By 1906, they estimated that uh, they had published 5,500 of her hymns. Her writing style was very unusual. She never mastered braille and did not write her hymns down on paper. She would compose them in her mind and work out all the lines in her head and maintain them from memory. When she was finished, she would then dictate the final work to a secretary to copy onto paper. Many times she would simply listen to the music first and then fit the verses to the notes. This is how the song Blessed Assurance was written. Uh, a certain Mrs. Knapp, who was the wife of the founder of the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, came to her with a song. She played it on the organ and asked Fanny what the music said to her. And without hesitation, Fanny wrote the song Blessed Assurance to the melody that she heard. At the age of 60, she began personal evangelistic work in the Bowery District of New York City which was the poorest and roughest area in New York at that time. It was at this time she, she was moved to write the words to the hymn, Rescue the Perishing, which is number 639 in our book, you know, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. She was inspired to write that while she was doing evangelistic and benevolence work in New York City. In her final years, she was much sought after as a speaker and um, she traveled extensively. At one point, a Scottish minister wishing to be sympathetic said to her, I think it is a great pity that the master did not give you sight when he showered you with so many other gifts. And Fanny quickly replied, do you know that if at birth I had been able to make one petition, it would have been that I should be born blind. Why, exclaimed the preacher, because, she said, when I get to heaven, the first face that I shall gladden my sight will be that of my Savior. Thought that was pretty good. On the evening of February 11th, 1915, at the age of 95, Fanny Crosby dictated a cheerful letter, including a poem to a bereaving friend. That night she passed from this life. At her funeral, it was said that there was no end to the flowers that were sent from all over the world. On her headstone is the inscription, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Aunt Fanny, she hath done what she could. Our own songbook contains 19 of Fanny Crosby's hymns. All of the songs that we've sung today are all songs by Fanny J. Crosby, even the invitation song and closing song we'll sing a little bit later. She was a woman who did great things despite her handicap and her work provides us with inspiration each time we meet for worship. Her life also teaches us some valuable lessons for our own lives and I'd like to close up my lesson with some of these lessons that may be encouraging to you. I call it Lessons from the Blind Poetess. Lesson number one, life can be beautiful no matter what. Life can be beautiful no matter what. Here is a person born to a poor family, limited because she was a woman at a time where there were few opportunities for education and development for women wrongfully handicapped from the very beginning of her life, and then lost her only child at birth. Few of us can say we have had to overcome so many obstacles in our life. And yet, because of the obstacles, Fanny Crosby learned to see life as beautiful for several reasons. First, she learned early on to be content with what she did have. She had a powerful memory. She had an insatiable curiosity and she had a marvelous gift for words. She didn't focus on what she did not have, wealth, position, sight. She focused on the gifts that God had given her and that she joyfully possessed. 
Also, she focused on what was beautiful in her life. Early on as a poetess, she delighted in expressing thoughts and images that had been sewn into her heart by her loving grandmother. In her career as a hymn writer, she continued to devote her creative energy to describing in song the beauty of God's love and the graciousness of His promises. By grace, she learned to see through her suffering what others could not, and that was even though there is suffering and, ugliest, uh, and ugliness, rather, life could still be beautiful. Paul says in Philippians 4 verse 8, finally brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Fanny Crosby practiced this in her sightless world and thus came to see and write about the beauty that she saw in every single thing. Lesson number two, you can serve God from where you stand. You can serve God from where you stand. You know, this woman was not always a religious person. She began her career as a secular writer and poetess, and because of her blindness, she became famous for her poetry. However, after she began teaching at the Institute for the Blind and had a family, a, well -advanced, a fairly well-advanced career as a writer, an epidemic swept through New York and half of her students died as a result. She was moved by this incident to commit her life to Christ. But what could she do? She couldn't preach, she couldn't teach, she couldn't go out as a missionary. She was a blind woman who wrote poetry. As I've already mentioned, beginning at the age of 44, she started writing hymns, which are among the most widely used and loved, even to this day, after her death. We here in you know, Oklahoma are singing the words that she wrote 100 years ago. And I dare say 100 years from now, Christians will be doing the same thing. She didn't ask for new gifts. She didn't ask God for new opportunities. She simply turned her talents over to the Lord and like the fish and the bread you know, that Jesus multiplied, He multiplied her words to be heard by countless millions of people in praising God. One other lesson that I'd like to remind us from her life, you can grow old without growing bitter. Here's a person who could have really wallowed in self-pity and bitterness in growing older, but didn't. She was blind from the beginning. She married late in life. She could not see her only baby and it died before she could even know it. And yet she refused to allow the circumstances of her life to rule the quality of her character. Advanced in years, she summed up her life with the following words, and I quote, when I look down the avenue of those 90 years, I find that I have been interested in everything advanced for the welfare of mankind. I have made up my mind never to become a disagreeable old woman and always to take, a cheerful and, uh, to take cheer and sunshine with me. Thus life becomes one grand choral song, sweetest at its close. She focused on the things which come from above as James says in chapter three, verse 13 and 18 of his epistle. And in doing so, she produced the fruit of those heavenly things in her life. Things like purity and gentleness and mercy and good works. You know, our uh, golden age should be golden indeed, filled with the fruit that we have, cultivated for a lifetime of living in Jesus' love and grace. It doesn't make any sense that as we grow older, we get crankier if we're in Christ. How does that work? And the proof of that, uh, uh, of that beautiful thing is what we did, is it last weekend? I'm showing my age, can't even remember last weekend. We did, you know, the four 90 year olds that were, that were the eight uh, 90 year olds that we celebrated, all here, all drove themselves here, full of smiles and cheer. Everyone happy to be with them and around them at that time. 
as we are every time that they, that they are here. If we are, if we are bitter and angry and loveless in old age, what does that say for a lifetime of Christian living? Fanny Crosby demonstrated that when one's roots are firmly planted in the word of God and we draw in the nourishment of God for a lifetime, we will be as David the psalmist says, they will still yield fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap and very green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him, Psalm 92, 14 and 15. So this has been an unusual sermon for me. Most of my lessons are based on texts or characters or ideas from the Bible. But the Bible does say that we are to be imitators of those through faith and practice inherit the promises. The Bible does say that, Hebrews 6. The Bible does say that we are to imitate what is good, 3 John 11. This woman, Fanny J. Crosby, leaves all of us with a great example to imitate. And that's why I wanted to tell, her your or tell you her story this morning. She teaches us that through the eyes of faith, we can see the beauty of life and rejoice in that beauty, even while accepting that there is ugliness and sorrow in life as well. The free will God gives us enables us to choose what we will raise up. Will we raise up the beauty or will we raise up the ugliness? We get to choose that every single day. Her life shows us that through the grace of God, we can give our lives over to Him and He can do something wonderful with our lives. Look at Moses and David and Mary and Paul and so many others. The difference was not what they had or who they were. The difference was that they gave themselves over to God and He did something great with them. Fanny J. Crosby was one more person in a long line of individuals who let God make something of the small gifts that they possessed. Finally, she showed everyone that because of perseverance, we can look forward to growing older. Oh yes, there are aches and pains and inconveniences of advanced age, but there's also the sure knowledge that the race is nearly over and victory, sweet victory, is just a moment away. The peace and security of those who have lived a long and faithful life should stand as a beacon to guide the young in their faith. I, I hope her story has been a blessing for everyone here this morning. I hope we have been inspired to, as they say, see the beauty and the blessings in each of our lives, to offer to the Lord our lives, no matter how simple, no matter how humble, to persevere through whatever trials we are suffering now so that we can reach the end faithfully following Jesus. It doesn't matter if we were arrived there without health or family or money or even dignity. So long as we arrive with the praise of Jesus on our lips, He will receive us. And finally, I hope that if any here need to confess His lovely name, who need to be immersed or baptized or need to be restored or need prayer or any other ministry, please, we encourage you to respond as we stand and sing one more song by Fanny Crosby, and that is the song Blessed Insurance. Shall we stand and sing as we consider our response to this morning's lesson?